Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching how to write an article. The question is, give advice to foreign students who want to learn English. Okay, so in this video, I'd like us to think about a few points before we start writing the article. First point is that the audience or the reader of an article usually consists of the general public. We're not just writing a letter for one person, we're writing to the general public and this needs to be reflected in our writing. We don't want it to be too academic, we want it to be entertaining and we need to remember that and use that in our language. Second thing, we want it to have a catchy introduction. We want to get the reader's attention as soon as possible, and we do that through three different means. You can start your introduction by giving a fact, and that usually would include a statistic. You can start with a rhetorical question, and a rhetorical question means you ask a question but you do not expect an answer. Or you can start with a proverb. Uh, maybe a famous quote or a saying or a proverb. These are interesting ways to start your, your introduction for your article. In your article, you need to use examples. We want to stimulate the reader's imagination. Um, and we, we do that by using examples. We're going to use informal idioms because we want to be friendly. We want to come across as friendly with our audience. And finally, in the conclusion, you're going to give your overall opinion or your final answer to the question. And an article would usually consist of between four to five paragraphs. That's usually how many paragraphs we would have in an article. Now, before I start the article itself, I'm just going to introduce you to some vocabulary that I have used in this article. I'm going to go through them together. First one is social circle, and this just means your network of friends, the people around you who you interact with socially. This could be online, face-to-face, -face, or anything like that. Next, we're going to use the verb mingle, to mingle, and that means to mix with other people, to socialize and mix with other people. Next, we're going to use the idiom, jump in at the deep end. To jump in at the deep end means to start doing something that might be difficult, but you don't hesitate and you don't worry and keep thinking about it. You just jump in and start without worrying about it. Chinwagger. <laughs> Chinwagger means someone who talks or gossips about everything. Someone basically who talks a lot and their chin keeps wagging. Chinwagger. Take it from me. It means take my advice, trust me, believe me. In no time means very quickly. Last but not least. So we usually use this. It's a linker and we use this at the very end of a list of items. And it means this might be the last point, but it's as important as all the points we've mentioned before. So we're saying it last, but it doesn't mean that it is least important. It's just as important as everything else we've previously mentioned. And keep at it. Keep at it means don't give up. Keep at it. Okay. So that's the vocabulary that I have used in this article, and you'll see it in a few moments. First, uh, I'm going to introduce you to the plan that I've created. Now, every successful writer, whether you're writing um, for an exam or you want to become a writer, it's very good to have a plan to know exactly what you want to write in which part of your writing. Now, I'm going to start in my introduction, I'm going to start with a rhetorical question because I want to get my reader's attention and then I'm going to include a proverb and that's just for added interest.
In body paragraph number one, I'm going to talk about mingling and how important it is for foreign students to mingle with English speakers so that they can learn English quickly. Body paragraph two, I'm going to talk about the importance of taking up a hobby and how that can play a role in learning English. And in body paragraph three, I'm going to talk about persistence and how we shouldn't give up and we should be persistent when we want to try and learn a language. So those are my body paragraphs. And finally, in my conclusion, I'm going to review all my points and end with a question. So my very last sentence in my article is going to be a question. And we do this just to leave the reader with something to think about. And that's a very good tip, whether you're writing for um, level one, level two ESOL, or whether you're writing for IELTS and TOEFL, leaving the reader with a question to think about is a really, really good tip. Okay, let's begin. So in the introduction, I said that I want to start with a rhetorical question, and here we go. So you want to learn English, but don't know where to start? Someone once said that learning isn't a spectator sport. You have to get your hands dirty. So here I've started with a rhetorical question and I've continued with a proverb, which is exactly what I wanted to do in my plan. In other words, you've got to work for it. In this article, I'm going to share a few tips that really helped me create my social circle once I arrived in the UK. So I've started with my rhetorical question. I've given a proverb and this is going to add interest from the reader's point of view. And in my introduction, I've laid out what my plan is. I'm going to share a few tips that really helped me. And so the reader knows already what my article is going to be about. It's very important to introduce this to the reader. The most important lesson I learned is that you have to mingle as much as you can with the locals if you want to improve your English. I can't stress enough how crucial it is to jump in at the deep end and just start talking about anything and everything. Learn to become a real chinwagger. The majority of the people here are very sympathetic and respond positively. So just like in my plan, I've started talking about mingling with people, and that's what I've said, mingle. I can't stress enough how crucial it is to jump in at the deep end. Now you'll see in my paragraph, in my sentences, I'm giving advice, but I'm not using the typical structure of my advice is, I suggest, if I were you, these are very elementary ways of giving advice. You'll see here in the article that I've used more advanced structures for giving advice. The most important lesson I learned is that you have to mingle. This is one way of giving advice. You have to mingle. I can't stress enough how crucial it is to this also is another way of giving advice. Learn to become a real chinwagger. Learn to, and your verb, again, this is another way of giving advice. So in this paragraph itself, I'm telling my examiner, I'm showing my examiner three different ways I have used to give advice. And that's the structure of the language. OK, so that was body paragraph one, mingling. Let's go to body paragraph two, which was about hobby. Another useful tip is to take up a new hobby. You could always join the local gym or find a book club and sign up. Volunteering at a charity shop is also worth a try. But if you want my advice, make sure your hobby involves interacting with native speakers. 
Talking to English speakers in real-world situations is the best way to pick up the language fast. Another advantage is that you won't be alone. Take it from me, you don't want to isolate yourself from others. You'll just end up lonely and depressed. And my apologies there that initially I made a mistake and I've corrected it now, so excuse me for that. Um, so in this paragraph again, you can see that I have used many different types of structure to advise this reader. You could always join, you could always do, you could always go. So starting with you could always and your verb is another way of giving advice. You could join the gym or go to a book club and sign up. And then I've got here a gerund. Volunteering at a charity shop is also worth a try. Again, this is another way of giving advice. Here, if you want my advice, make sure your hobby involves interacting with nat native speakers. So here I have specifically used the word advice if you want my advice. Talking to English speakers is the best way to pick up the language. I've given the advantage and again, I've given my advice here. You don't want to isolate yourself from others. You'll just end up lonely and depressed. So again, in this paragraph, you can see that I've used vocabulary. I've used grammar. I've used the structure of giving advice again. Let's go to body paragraph three. Last but not least, be persistent. I can't recommend this point strongly enough. The harder you work, the more you try, the quicker you'll pick up the language. Before you know it, you'll be chatting away like the locals. Just don't give up. Again, be persistent is a form of giving advice. I can't recommend this strongly enough is another way of giving advice. And finally, don't give up. All of these are different ways for giving advice. And this is my conclusion. So, if you want to learn English, create a network of friends, give yourself something to do in your spare time, which involves interacting with others, and keep at it. So you can see in these first in these first lines, I have reviewed and basically recapped everything that I've just talked about. If you want to learn English, this is my question. Create a network of friends, which means mingle with people. Give yourself something to do in your spare time, which involves communicating with others, which was my paragraph about taking up a hobby and keep at it, which is my way of referring back to being persistent. So I've reviewed all of my points here. After trying these few tips, you should start seeing changes in yourself in no time. They certainly worked for me. Now it's your turn. Which will you try first? And this is where I leave the reader with a question, food for thought, for the reader to think about, OK, how can they relate to what I've just talked about and which one are they going to try first? And so that is my suggestion for writing an article. You see that I have included certain elements of vocabulary. I've included several different ways for making suggestions and giving advice. And I have stuck to the question. I've constantly referred back to the question, which was giving advice to a foreign student on how they can learn English. I hope that you found this video useful. Um, I would love to hear any comments or questions that you may have. Thank you very much for listening.